So, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ahmaduhu wa usalli ala Rasulil Kareem. Amma ba'd. So today I want to talk about a disasterly plan that uh, has been circulating in Saudi Arabia for a long time. For a long time. I will show you this. This is not the first time the Saudi uh, intellectuals, the Saudi Wahhabi scholars have thought of the idea of removing the grave of the Prophet ﷺ, thought of removing the green dome of the Prophet ﷺ. I'm going to show you what Sheikh Albani said, what Sheikh Uthaymin said, what Sheikh bin Baz said, and what is being circulated. So it started with, I remember I met maybe about when I was in my 30s, one of the students of, quote unquote, students of Sheikh Albani. And he had said to me in a conversation, Oh, the hadith about the Prophet being buried wherever he dies, that's a weak hadith. Well, that was a conversation I had back then and it was nothing more than that comment at that time. But it also showed me the lack of understanding some of these people who considered themselves as people of hadith, how, lack, how much of a lack of understanding they have. And how much they don't understand history as it actually plays out and are so fragmented in this narration and that narration and everything is seen as it as seen and as it, as its fragmented pieces rather than as a whole okay so let me start and then i'm going to first talk about what happened with this report what has been said about this report and then i want to talk about what the saudi scholars are talking about what they have already agreed upon for the most part, including the famous website Islam Q&A. Maybe some of you have gone there for question and answers, what they say about this issue. And then I'm going to tell you about the five attempts previously made to take the body of the Prophet or Abu Bakr and Omar from their grave, the five previous attempts and what happened each time that has been recorded in the history. Okay? Now, <clears throat> this is not the first time people are thinking about uh, destroying the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. And so let's get to this. Yeah, I'm just going to show you different parts. Proposal made to shift the Prophet's tomb in Saudi. Okay, so the proposal is that we take the Prophet ﷺ away from the house of Aisha where he's presently residing, the Prophet ﷺ, Abu Bakr and Omar, where they're presently residing, and to shift them to Jannatul Baqi, okay, to shift them in the graves there. Now, the Saudi authority has used a specific word in denying, no, this is misinformation, this is completely wrong, this is not our intent. They said, what we want is we want to isolate the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. So I'm going to get into all of that, inshallah ta'ala. Okay. Proposal made to shift the Prophet ﷺ's tomb in Saudi. A reputed Saudi academic has compiled a document, 67 pages by the way, that proposes to destroy the tomb of the Prophet ﷺ and to remove his remains from the grave. Okay. Now, the one thing the Saudi Wahhabi people hate, they hate this green dome. They just don't like it. Okay? <coughs> so, now, let me go on to, um, the proposal reportedly suggests that the remains of the Prophet be shifted to an anonymous grave in a nearby, in Al-Baqi Cemetery. Now let me go on to the next point here. Okay. Several pages of the consultation. Uh, okay, so Dr. Alwi, Director of the Islamic Heritage Research Foundation. Like all, the only thing this research foundation of Islamic heritage has done, they have taken the grave of Omar and built the clock tower over it with the horns of Satan on top. They've taken the house of Khatija radiallahu anha where the Prophet also lived and made it into bathrooms. This is, this is what Dr. Alwi, Director of Islamic Heritage 
Research Foundation told the Independent News. People visit the chambers in which are rooms where the Prophet's family lived and turn towards the burial chamber to pray. People turn towards the burial chamber to pray to the Prophet. So if one person prayed to the Prophet, that means what? We get destroy everything of all our Islamic heritage? You'll see it gets worse. Now they want to prevent pilgrims from attending and venerating the tomb because they believe that it is shirk or idolatry. Has any one of you ever been to the grave of the Prophet to pray to the Prophet? No. But on, the only way we can stop people from visiting the Prophet is to get him out into the cemetery so let's not do it let's not leave him where Abu Bakr left him or the Sahaba left him this is one of the biggest problems of the, the Wahhabi movement they don't give the idea of ijma of the Sahaba they don't give the idea of the ijma of the Sahaba the consensus of the Sahaba and their agreement they don't give it any value whatsoever if the Sahaba prayed 20 rak'ah if Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Shafi, Imam Malik, Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal all agree upon 20 rak'ah, but the Wahhabi movement wants to say, no, we have to pray 8 in Ramadan. And let's dismiss the entire consensus and ijma of the Ummah. And this is exactly the problem here. They, it'll, it'll get more interesting. Okay? Now they want to prevent shirk. Okay? For a century, Muslim pilgrims have made their way to Mecca in order to visit the Kaaba, a black a cube, okay, uh, built by Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. And uh, the Annabi mosque around the tomb has been expanded by generations of Arabian rulers, particularly the Ottomans. So this is out of the Ottoman hate, partly, which they didn't mind attacking Medina when they were bringing down the Khilafah. When they were bringing down the Khilafah and the Saudi family attacked Medina, killed the people of Medina, attacked the mosque of the Prophet ﷺ. They even tried to bring down the, the green dome at that time of the Prophet ﷺ. I'll talk about that in a second. It includes hand-painted calligraphy documents, details, the Prophet's life, his family. Dr. Alwi said the plans also call for these to be destroyed as well as the green dome which covers the tomb of the Prophet ﷺ. Okay, so I think this is enough for here. Let's ask Saudi Arabia why they have protected all the Jewish sites of, of the Jews that used to live in Arabia. Why are they protecting those sites? Well, Saudi Arabia moved the remains. And by the way, Daily News was one of the first, I think, groups of people that, or the uh, media news that first broke this out. Will Saudi Arabia move the remains of the Prophet Wasallam? Controversial plan for anonymous burial to prevent the site itself being worshipped. This is what we call a strawman argument. It's an argument that has, no, it's not even a real argument. It's like, not even a real, it's like you made up an argument. It's like you're arguing something that doesn't even exist. You're trying to show you're doing something good, arguing over an issue that doesn't even exist. And the Prophet said, وسلم, he did not fear this type of shirk, this type of shirk, not the big shirk that is bigger than the jal, which is riya, riya showing off. But this shirk, the Prophet said, he doesn't fear this for the Ummah. No one goes to the uh, Medina to pray to the Prophet wasallam. Okay? They go there to say salams upon him, wasallam. Okay? Uh, now, let's move on. The Daily Star also mentioned this plan for the destruction of Muhammad's tomb, wasallam. So obviously when this news first broke out, there was outrage from the Muslims that how could there even be such a report or such a proposal that's even being considered. So this is how they responded. Okay, uh, let me just uh, show this. Uh, the newspaper independent article on the removal of the Prophet's tomb, sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And uh, so they basically came back with saying, no, 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 this is not what we meant. Uh fell in a trap of misunderstanding after it was mistranslated. Okay? And then they explain that no, we do not want to destroy the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. We could never imagine doing that. Okay? Rather, uh, what he said then is uh, we wanted to only isolate the 
the grave of the Prophet Let me show that part to you here. So the article, or rather the 67 page writing, the article states that there are calls for the Prophet's tomb to be isolated and not destroyed. So what they're trying to play with words is, is that, no, we don't want to by destroyed meaning we don't want to destroy the prophet himself sallam. we just want to isolate him we just want to put him in a different place or isolate him whatever that means okay so this adjunct professor at i think umul qura university says uh, dr shahbal in fact called for separation of the grave of the prophet not destruction again this is play with words whether you however you put it it is to say that what we've been doing in our tradition is wrong and we need to change things. Middle East, I also did a, a article on this. Alarm over the Saudi plan to remove the tomb of the Prophet Wasallam. However you word it, right? But it comes with a huge problem. And I'll, I'll talk more about that in a second. Now, so you understand that this issue of removing the green dome or the removing the grave of the Prophet Wasallam. These are not issues that are new, new. These are issues the Saudi Wahhabi scholars have been talking about for a long time. And I'm going to share some of that with you uh, right now. So, um, so the first person, the green dome destroyed and the noble grave removed, question mark. Or, you know, that's the desired plan. As, like I said, there have been five attempts before and we can talk about what happened each time. Abdul Aziz Abdul Rahman attacked Medina. And when he attacked Medina, he was attacking the Khilafa of that time. So Abdul Aziz Abdul Rahman attacked Medina many times. He even bombed Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam's blessed shrine in an attack in 1926, but unfortunately could not capture the city. He at that time when the they were fighting the Saudis were fighting against the um the Ottomans, it took a long time from the, for them to capture uh, Medina. Okay, The following news reports, actually these are actual news reports. Uh, news was reported in the papers of Sa'at in Istanbul on September 9th, 1344 after Hijra. Okay, 1926, Medina bombarded. So this is a newspaper clip. We had previously reported that Muslims of India were agitated by the bombardment of Medina by Abdul Aziz ibn Saud. Okay, so this is a clip that they had bombed Medina and even the shrine of the Prophet sallallahu No one worships Muhammad sallallahu but we kiss his feet and we kiss his hands and we kiss his forehead sallallahu Notes on the Bedouins and the Wahhabis. Even the large dome over the tomb of the Prophet at Medina was destined to share a similar fate. Saud had given orders that it should be demolished. This is for the green dome. The King, Sa King of Saudi Arabia okay, had given, Saud had given orders that it should be demolished, but its solid structure defiled the rude efforts of his soldiers after several of them had been killed by falling from the dome. The attempt was given up. This the inhabitants of Medina declared to have been done through the uh, interposition of heaven, meaning by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this was published uh, in 1831. Okay, Notes on the Bedouins and the Wahhabis collected during his travels in the East uh, by John Lewis. Okay, <coughs> Written in the copy of the weekly periodical ad dawa dated Sha'ban, 1397 after Hijra, what which was prepared by a madrasa named Jamiatul Islamiyya in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia, in the coming enlargement of Masjid An Nabwi, only the west side should be widened, and the great bid'ah should be ended. The great bid'ah is the inclusion of the three graves in the masjid. The eastern wall should be brought back to its former place, and the graves should be left outside the masjid. This is Sheikh Albani said the dome over the great prophet's grave should be destroyed. And Sheikh Albani declared that where the prophet is buried is weak. 
And let's forget about the ijma of the Sahaba, like I mentioned. I'm giving you a principle. An agreement of all the companions of the Prophet is equal to uh, like an authentic hadith, meaning they have, it's it's done. And Imam Malik's uh, fiqh, the agreement of the people of Medina, it's like done. Albani demanded in four or five of his books that the noble grave be brought out of the masjid in Medina and its green dome, dome destroyed. He states, I found no evidence for the Prophet وسلم, Allah's blessing and greet him, hearing of the salam of those who greet to greet him at his grave. And I do not know from where Ibn Taymiyyah, so now he's even criticizing Ibn Taymiyyah, who is his sheikh or his sheikh al-mashayikh for them. Ibn Taymiyyah took his claim in Majmu'at al-Fatwa, in Majmu'at al-Fatawa, that he, Allah bless and greet, uh, greet him, hears the salam from someone near. So he's denying all of this, okay? So what I'm trying to say is, it's not surprising that such an idea was floated because they've been talking about this and doing this and attacking Medina from the beginning. And they've been saying that this is a bid'ah and it is wrong and we need to remove the grave of the Prophet. Now I want to ask all my Wahhabi friends, all my Salafi friends, do you agree that we should remove the grave of the Prophet? The Prophet said, Wherever someone has been married, uh, buried to respect that person is to leave him where he's buried. This is for the average Muslim. That you bury the perfect person. Now if he's buried, let him be buried. What are you going to take him out? Ismail and Hajra are buried in Mecca. So what are you going to do? Take them out and put them somewhere else? I mean, this idea that the, there should be no graves in the masjid or by the masjid, this is a foreign idea to Islam. There's no such thing. Just that they should not be worshipped. We do not worship anyone other than Allah. La ilaha illallah. He, the Prophet is a bashar, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so, you have been, uh, okay, uh, so, you know, you've been provided a haven to Nasir al-Bani and abetted him, allowing him to publish his book, right? Removal of the grave of the Prophet ﷺ. Okay, so Sheikh bin Baz, as for the dome, it was constructed by some later air ignorant rulers, meaning the Ottomans. It was to be removed. There is nothing wrong in doing so. Rather, this is the correct thing. However, some of the ignorant folk will not be able to endure this, which is the ijma of the ummah. All the scholars, they're all ignorant. Right, This is the correct thing. However, some of the ignorant folk will not be able to endure this and may accuse those who remove it that they are not upon the truth and that they hate the Prophet It is because of this the Saudi state has left the dome as it is because it was not made by them and they do not wish for troubles and instability which might be created by some people from the grave worshippers. There's no grave worshippers. There's no grave worshippers. Have you ever seen a Muslim that's a grave worshipper? If a Muslim is a grave worshipper, that is shirk, and it should be stopped, and it is a bid'ah. But majority, overwhelming, 99.9999 recurrent percent of the people that go to the mosque of the Prophet are not worshipping Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. No. <coughs> you can read the Arabic here. It is not permitted to glorify buildings and historical sites. This is why the historical preservation uh, person in Saudi Arabia, all he does is remove all the Islamic sites and then put all these big hotels and these big buildings and all these international corporations, put them there. This is not bid'ah. And then they, you know, they have their thing, right? So, like I was saying, uh, okay, so uh, a pamphlet published by the Ministry of Islamic Affairs endorsed by Abdul Aziz as Sheikh, the Grand Mufti of Saudi Arabia. Okay, the Islamic Caliph Omar bin Khattab are buried reads. The, okay, the green dome shall be demolished and the three graves flattened in the Prophet's mosque. Now, I want to tell you something, which is something important to consider. The Saudi plans include to reduce Hajj and Umrah people 
increase their concerts and everything that you've been seeing them doing. Let's increase that. Let's increase the people, go, decrease the people going to Hajj, the pe- decrease the people going to Umrah. And one of the ways they can, they will try to accomplish that. And one of the ways that they can try to accomplish that is to tamper his, with, with things like, oh, we isolated the Prophet. You can't even see the Prophet. Right? So people be here for like one or, they'll be there for less time. Because the Prophet people spend more time in Medina sometimes than even in Mecca. So they'll be there less. They want to bring in the tourists. And so, this is not the end of it. Just now watch. <coughs> Shaykh Uthaymeen says, May Allah make it easy for us to demolish it, meaning the green dome. Now, I want to ask you, once you demolish the green dome, let the world try and see what happens. But once once you demolish the Green Dome, the brand name of the Prophet the symbol of the Prophet, Allah has given that Green Dome has become, for the Muslims in their heart, like a sha'irillah, like a symbol of Allah and a symbol of the Prophet The Green Dome you know, is signifying something about the Prophet But they want to get rid of that. Because they're people of Tawheed, oneness of Allah. But they're people of Tawheed that have done sujood to the White House. Done sujood to the clock tower makers. So, Sheikh Uthaymeen is asked about the uh, the Qubba, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the Green Dome, okay, the Qubba of the Prophet. Uh, he says, "Let's see if I can get this to play." كأنهم في ذلك الوقت ما رأوا مثلا الفسحة إلا من الجهل فدخلت الحجرة في المسجد فهي حجرة في مسجد وليس قبرا في المسجد عرفت؟ I mean he is supposed to be a grand mufti and is supposed to be able to make you know good and logical and clear arguments his argument is in the time of the prophet the house of the prophet was a house in the masjid it was never meant to be a grave in the masjid. Let me ask you, where the Prophet, where any Muslim dies, forget about Nabi Muhammad wasallam. any Muslim dies, is it not written where he will be buried? If it is written, the Prophet was buried to be buried here, where he is buried, because that's what's written, that's for any Muslim. Then the Prophet says, wasallam, on top of that, a Prophet is buried where he dies. But Sheikh Al-Bani says that's weak. Okay. But the ijma of the Sahaba was to bury him in the house of Aisha. Now why do you think they will bury him in the house of Aisha? They must have a really good reason why they'll bury him in the house of the Aisha. Why the Prophet didn't know about Tawheed? He didn't know. He wasn't worried. Oh, the Prophet wasn't worried. Oh, they'll start worshipping me. You know what? I should make sure. I should make sure that my grave is not in the house of Aisha because I know in the future my masjid will expand. The Prophet even said this. He even indicated this rather. So the Prophet knows his masjid will expand. The Sahaba started to expand his masjid. <coughs> the Prophet didn't know. Shaykh Uthaymeen, Shaykh bin Baz, Shaykh Albani, and all of you other, all other Sanafis and Wahhabis who are, who you think you're bigger Tawhidists than the Prophet, the Prophet did not know that the masjid will expand and that his qabr might be made into a grave. Of course, because he said that. Don't make my grave, a grave into a qabr, into a place of worship. He said that. So if he said that, then why did he allow himself to be buried? In the house of Aisha 
radiyallahu anha why did the sahaba they knew they knew less tawhid than you the prophet knew less tawhid than you because the prophet knew as he also said he is not fearful of shirk from this ummah just because allah says don't do shirk doesn't mean the average muslim will be doing shirk or just because the prophet says do not worship the graves like the previous people yes some people will do that but it does not mean that will become the standard, nor does that mean that's a reason to have a ruling to change the decision of the Sahabas. So, my Wahhabi brothers and my Salafi brothers, tell me, are you more interested in the subject of Tawheed than the Prophet? Or you're more interested in the subject of Tawheed then the Sahaba, well, the Prophet didn't know what happened with Isa wasalam, Did he not mention it? Then why he allowed himself? Or why did the Sahaba allow themselves to bury him there? Now let me take you to a leading Islamic website that answers questions for people. And many of you may be going there to get your questions answered. This is the Salafi website, History of the Green Dome. Can you please tell me more about the Green Dome in Medina, its history, and the ruling of its construction on leaving it as it is? Summary of answer. The Green Dome of the Prophet some dates back to the 7th century. It was built during the reign of, of Sultan such and such. The scholars criticized the building of the Green Dome and it being a given a color. So the scholars criticized the dome being given a color. I mean, you have to give it a color. I mean, if you're going to construct something, and of course, if you're going to construct something with ihsan and aesthetics, which I don't think Saudis know what that means. Do the Saudis know what aesthetics means? I don't think they know what aesthetic means. But if you build something with perfection and with beauty, it has to have a color. I'm sorry. If you're going to, what do you want? There to be a colorless dome? What do you want? You don't want a green dome? What do you want? Yellow? You want black? I mean, it'll be a color. Okay? I don't even know why the Saudi scholars even wrote this point about it being given a color. I think I know why. Because everyone talks about the green dome. So they are allergic. They have an allergic reaction to the idea of the green dome. They would have been just as allergic if it was given any other color. The reason why the Green Dome is not demolished is as to ward off fitna and for the fear that it may lead to chaos amongst ordinary people and the ignorant. Yes, we're all ignorant. We don't understand the basic things of our deen. But you do. You know, this is just, it's just laughable and comical. Now let me end by the five attempts to steal the body of the Prophet ﷺ from his rawda. And by the way, I wonder what these people want to do with the, you know, that area. I just, after reading the word rawda, it just came to me. The Prophet has declared that area of the masjid as rawda, rawda tul jannah, one of the gardens of jannah. So what place better on earth to bury the Prophet than that piece of earth that is in jannah, that is part of jannah? Five attempts to steal the body of the Prophet Okay. Attempt number one okay, was in the fifth hijrah. The first attempt was made to transfer the bodies of the Prophet and his two companions from Medina to Egypt. Okay. The order was issued by the Egyptian Fatimi ruler. Okay. It was carried out. They tried to carry out this plot. Okay. Uh, Ibn Najjar wrote in his book, History of Baghdad. Okay. Uh, Ba'amrullah hatched this pl plot to attract the attention of the world to Egypt. The same thing that uh, that person did in Stulfil. Uh, so Ba'amrullah hatched this plan to attract the attention of the world to Egypt and thus allowing the residents of Egypt to gain great respect. The rulers spent a lot of money to build an extensive enclosure for its purpose. He sent Abu al-Futtah to Medina to carry out the plan. When Abu Fatah arrived in Medina, the residents of Medina came to know about his plot. They gathered around him. Qari Zalbani recited the following verses of Quran there. 
uh, and the verse Allah to qatul qawmin ladhi nakathu aymanahum wuhammu bi ikhraji rasul and this ayah will tell you what to do with the Prophet's grave or not to do even today Allah to qatilu qawman will you not fight a people and in this case the Saudi government nakathu who have broken those that have violated their covenant. You had the covenant of being Khadimul Haramain. You have become Haramul Haramain. But if they violate their oaths after their covenant, attack your religion with disapproval and criticism, then fight the leaders of disbelief. Allah tu qatilu qawman nakathu aymanahum wa hammu bi ikhrajir rasul. And they have intended to take the Prophet out. And even today this ayah applies. There's a people that want to take the Prophet out. And Allah says about those people that want to take the Prophet out, وَهُمْ بَدَأُكُمْ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ They started this whole thing against you the first time. The first time they fought against the Ottomans. They attacked Medina first. I don't know why there's not a civilian army to bring down the Saudi government. Allah, then, أَتَخْشَوْنَهُمْ You fear them? فَاللَّهُ أَحَقَّ أَحَقُّ أَن تَخْشَاهُ But Allah is more rightful that you should fear Him in this regard. That they want to take out the Prophet. In this context, it's talking about they wanted to take the Prophet out of Medina. They wanted to take the Prophet out of Medina. Okay, they wanted him to go and leave Medina. Okay, wahum uh, Sorry, this is referring to taking the prophet out of Mecca. Okay, so there's like different opinions, but it's mostly about Mecca. Sorry, Allah tu qatilu qawman nakathu aymanahum wahum wahamu bi ikhraj rasul wahum badaukum awwal mara atakshawnahum fa Allah fa Allahu ahqu an takshawhu in kuntum mu'minin. Let me read the translation of that in the previous context and today's context. But if they violate their oaths and their trusts and attack your religion with disapproval and criticism, then fight the leaders of disbelief. Who are the leaders of disbelief today? In the Muslim world, it's the Saudis. It's the Wahhabis. For surely their oaths are nothing to them so that they may stop. Will you not fight a people who have violated their oaths and intended to expel the Prophet or ikhraj rasul more properly, take out the Prophet. While they did attack you first, do you fear them? Allah is more right, has more right, that you should fear Him if you are truly believers. <coughs> so when he read this ayah, and it was understood by this ayah, this ayah is applying to the situation of these people trying to take the Prophet out of his grave, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The residents of Medina got furious and were about to kill Abu Fattah and his soldiers. This made Abu Fattah scared. and He said, I shall never carry out this dirty plan even if the ruler kills me. In the meanwhile, a big storm wept through the area that evening. Many houses, animals, and people died of the storm. Abu Fattah found a good excuse to run from Medina. And Allah saved the Prophet ﷺ and his companions from these criminals. Second attempt to take out the body of the Prophet ﷺ. Hatched a second plan but failed. Again, Ibn Sadun has reported in his book that Ba'amrullah sent some people to carry out his evil plans. These people started residing in a house near the Prophet's mosque, started digging an underground tunnel to reach the Prophet. During this, this a fearful lightning struck the area and the following voice was heard, announcing very loudly, your prophet's grave is being dug. The residents of Medina rushed out of their houses and started investigating. They got hold of the culprits and killed them all. <coughs> Third attempt. It took place in 557. Some Houthi reported that Christians made this plot very carefully to steal the body of the prophet. There was a very pious ruler in, in Egypt named Nuruddin Zanqi basically the teacher of Salahuddin Ayyubi. He had a dream of the Prophet once, twice, thrice, telling him, these are, these are people you have to help me against, protect me against. So he went to Medina. The Prophet had shown him the picture in his dreams. In fact, uh, 
I'll read this so you get a better context of the Prophet. Uh, there was a very pious uh, ruler of Egypt at the time known as Sultan Nuruddin Zanki. One night after Tahajjud, he saw the Prophet ﷺ in his dream. He was pointing to, uh, towards two persons of reddish color, saying, Save me from these two persons. Nuruddin woke up and was perplexed. He did evolution, performed Salat, and went back to sleep. Again, saw the same dream. Woke up again, offered Salat, went to sleep. He saw the same dream the third time, lost his sleep, and described his dreams to his advisors, Jamaluddin Mus Musali. And the advisor said to him, What are you still sitting here for? You should go to Medina immediately. He added, Please do not relate your dream to any other person. And so he started his journey to Medina, and he caught those people. Okay. The fourth attempt, Ibn Jubair has given details of this plot. He said, On 29th of Dhul Qadha, on 578, uh, 578. I arrived in Alexandria during my excursion tour of uh, Egypt. We left Alexandria on the 8th of Sul Hijjah. We saw that there was a very big crowd of people came out of their houses to see Roman Christian prisoners. These prisoners were brought on city camels facing towards the tail of the camels. Okay, the the Christians of Syria built some boats. So basically, these people they came, they were. They were they were looting and killing and doing all these uh, horrific things, and they declared a plan to take out the Prophet from the grave. Their most treacherous, treacherous plan was to remove the body of the Prophet ﷺ from the sacred chamber. They announced it boldly and started heading towards Medina. When they were about one day's journey away from Medina, the famous Hajjab Lahluh came with a few Moroccan youths who were expert at sea warfare. They arrested the Christians and killed some of them then and there. They also went sent some of these prisoners to other cities to be put to the sword. Some prisoners were sent to Mecca and Medina. Prisoners whom we saw were brought to Alexandria. In this way, Allah saved the grave of the Prophet Imam Tabari, the famous historian, has described as follows the head of the service personnel of the Prophet's mosque was Shamsuddin Sawab Lamti who was very gentle and kind person. Okay, basically, uh, 40 people or X number of people came to the into the masjid of the Prophet to dig the Prophet out after bribing some of the uh, aristocrats. And they were, according to him in his book, uh, uh, they knocked on the door, came inside, and then the earth swallowed them. Uh, so the ruler waited for them for a while. Finally, he sent for Sawab and asked them, Sawab, did some people not come to you? He said, yes, indeed. They were, however, buried in the earth. The ruler said, think before you speak. How can this happen? Sawab invited him to see the spot with his own eyes. The ruler said, leave the matter as it is. Don't mention this to anybody. I shall cut your head off if you talk to anyone about it. Okay, so <clears throat> I want to end with this verse of the Quran Allah to Qatilu Qawman Nakithu Aymanahum Will you not fight a people, an entity, a regime, a people who uh, this is referring to the people of Medina. Allah to Qatilu Qawman Nakathu Aymanahum and this is referring to the people of Makkah. Okay. Allah to Qatilu Qawman Nakathu Aymanahum. Will you not fight a people who have broken their covenant? This is referring to specifically the Treaty of Hudaybiyah with Quraysh. Or it can be referring to the Mithaq al Medina with the people of Medina. Wahammu bi ikhraj al Rasul. And just like the people of Medina wanted to uh, take the Prophet out of the city, the people of Medina also did, the Munafiqeen especially. And they started against you first. Do you fear them? O Saudi people, O people of Saudi Arabia, do you fear them, the Saudi regime? Allah has more rights that you fear him. In kuntum mu'minin, if you are truly believers. O people of Saudi Arabia, if this plan was to ever move forward, you must ask yourself what this verse says. You must stand up for what this verse says. 
And if you don't fear Allah, then Allah will protect his prophet and you will get no reward for protecting the prophet May Allah make us of those people that are in the forefront of standing up for the Prophet ﷺ, defending the Prophet ﷺ, and that we understand Islam not based upon modern, twisted uh, ideas, but rather understand Islam as Allah and His Messenger ﷺ wanted us to understand Islam. اللهم وفقنا لما تحب وترضى اللهم صل وسلم على محمد So I want to end by saying it's not surprising that such a plan was circulated it's not the first time and probably if you look at history it won't be the last time and that's okay because inshallah we have enough pious god-fearing muslims that they may stand up Maybe it's true, but let's hope it's true. Maybe it's not true. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of that last shower and give us the true understanding of his deen. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad.